Kid, seriously. Welcome to another emergency episode of the Kid Seriously Show. We're the only podcast around that uses all of its executive powers, including those we create, to get whatever we want. Every now and again, we get together to discuss the world. We play our famous trivia question game show, discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy once in a while, even review something. To my left, it's everyone's favorite orange slice hero. It's Luke Neitzel, and to my right, way to my right, it's the man from the mean streets of Maplewood. It's Mark Neitzel. Me, I am the mayor, Maya Madrid. Boys, how are you? Sir, um, I would just like to say it's pronounced Maplehood. Oh, okay. My bad. For all of us uh, uh, street gangsters from the east side of St. Paul. Uh, I'm good. I am pretty much over my cold now. So now the cough syrup is just for fun instead of function. Nice. Purple drank. Luke, how are you? Oh, me, I'm good. I got to hang out with Jim last night. So he got he got really, really drunk at my house. And, and then I had to, to drive him home and he couldn't figure out how to open the car door. So I had to, much like my small children, I had to open the car and buckle him in and, and take him home. But it, it was a fun night. I had a good time. There are so many jokes like circa 2002 that I'd make right now that are just not appropriate anymore with the current time and climate. So just going to let that one go and say, man, there's been a lot of stories about you and Jim being drunk lately. I hope everything's okay. I was sober. I was DD last night. Wait, so he just came over to your house and got shitty drunk? No, so this was the, this was actually one of the most brilliant parenting moves we ever did because he has a, he has a kid and my partner and I have two kids. So... They had actually gotten a babysitter, Jim and his wife, because they were going to go to a 40th birthday party, but the party got canceled. So instead of canceling the babysitter, we just took our kids to their house, and then they came to our house so that we could just all, my partner and then Jim and his wife all drank a bunch and we played games, and then I drove them home, picked my kids up, and came back. So it was a pretty sweet setup. How about you, Maya? Maya, how how is your weekend going? I'm not too shabby. Uh, we are going to be moving in the summer, so this teleconferencing thing that we have to keep doing because of the weather is going to be the new normal. Um, so I'm getting ready for that, but I'm um, just, you know, watching my AAF and uh, living the happy life. Got to watch the dunk contest with the three-point contest and then the, uh, the skills challenge yesterday, and Boom was real excited about that. So Were you watching the All-Star game today, or were you watching AAF? No. Because based on what I saw on Twitter, they should have taken away the the dunk trophy, the guy who won the dunk trophy. They should have taken that trophy away from him and gave it to Giannis, who dunked like 12 feet over the rim (laughs) during the actual game. It was amazing. I'll just watch the highlights. Nobody watches the All-Star game. Well, and I just watched a a Twitter gif of it, so. All right, well, uh, we should probably get around to uh, Chinchi Wandy's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? In true American style, our contestants will offer up earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or immediately mocked by our moderator. Here's how the two-player version of our game works. There's seven question. Each baller goes back and forth in a serpentine way, not unlike Serpentor, just generally, because it's like Serpentor. The winner has four. To win, you must get four. Tonight, our moderator, I think, is Mark, if I'm not mistaken, and he will go... And that is, that is correct. I, I lost the title on a bullshit call uh, against uh, Eugene Levy being Batman. And so as a result of that, I was forced to draft questions. So, gentlemen, are you ready? Oh, I sure hope so. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, who's going first? Um, Maya would go first because he won Maya last time. First. Okay. Well, that's appropriate, too, to, to tee off my first question here. So um, word is now that Maya's favorite movie, Aquaman, has now become second all-time uh, best-selling um, box office for the DC Universe in cinema history. And so we're all very happy uh, with how much Maya hates that movie. We, we can't overlook a simple fact, and that Jason Momoa looks absolutely nothing like the traditional Aquaman of the comics. Uh, it's it's almost embarrassing, really. I quite frankly, I wish he just put a shirt on. But you know, in in our fantasy world, right? In our fantasy world, here where we get to do what we want, 
Gentlemen, we are going to recast Aquaman, but we are recasting Aquaman to how he has, based on traditionally looked in the comics. I'm talking blonde, short hair, good looking guy. So you're going to recast the movie. The twist here, though, is you can use any actor from any period. It doesn't have to be somebody who is currently 30 years old and working. So pull from your vast repertoire of knowledge. Give me who should be recast as the traditional Aquaman. Man, I'm going to go real dark right off the bat and say Paul Walker. Originally, when I was planning on my answering the question, I was just going to say Paul Walker to ensure that another Aquaman wouldn't get made. But since you're allowing any single uh, guy from anywhere, I mean, the guy that looks the part most perfectly is Paul Walker. So I'm, I'm going to go a little bit older because Mark opened the parameters, though my guy's still alive and, and yours is dead. So I, I suppose yours was was within the parameters as well. But I, I, you know, you said you want someone who's blonde, really blonde, really good looking. And I actually kind of want them to be a decent actor, too, if we're, we're going to go through the motions on a traditional looking Aquaman, which is why I, I almost said Peter O'Toole. But I think I have to go Robert Redford would be a fantastic classic looking Aquaman. He can do anything with that gorgeous hair. Uh, you know, he, he's going to charm all the fish in the sea with his easygoing style. Like Ro- Robert Redford was, would, would be the, the Aquaman of Aquaman. Paul Newman is better if you're going to do that, but whatever. Hold on one second. I have to check one factoid on Twitter first before I make my decision. Yes, I, I am going to have to give the point to Luke. For the, you both got it wrong, okay? You, you both got it wrong. But the fact is that um, Mr. Robert Redford is also, to all three of us, Brother Redford. And so we have to stand up for, um, you know, giving back to our uh, fraternity brothers. No, the actual correct answer was going to be Revenge of the Nerds era, Ted McGinley. Ooh, that is good. How awesome would that Aquaman be? Yeah, that'd be pretty good. But he would get canceled immediately because of the curse. Okay, so Luke takes a one nothing lead over Maya. Uh, question number two. We're going to stick with the, the idea of recasting a movie, except this time you are going to recast using me in any movie, any role but you have to use me specifically. Who are you recasting with me as the role? Luke, go ahead. Hmm. I, uh, okay. I, I think that I'm probably going to have to, to go. I, all right. I got this picked out and a little bit's going to be pulling away with some of your earlier anger last year, but I think that one of the hallmarks of you, Mark, is, is your kind of, Lack of self awareness and increased self importance that you place on yourself. Okay. And I Here's think that is my... the summation of every Christopher Guest movie is people who think what they're doing is really, really important when it's really kind of goofy and, and whatnot. And, you know, we all know that you think you could be Batman at, at any time. I think you're doing a, a podcast that like two people listen to. Like per week, I think that you would be an amazing Eugene Lovey in Waiting for Guffman, um, you know, ma- making those stools and celebrating the history of Blaine is something I think you were born to do. Interesting. Maya? And then you're married to Catherine O'Hare, by the way, too. <laughs> for very similar reasons, I'm going to go with Ben Stiller's uh, best work in a film called mystery men and i will go with mr furious um i think just your your general way of putting people in the right place and and getting animated uh is perfect for me so that was the first thing that tripped in my head mystery okay Okay. both solid choices i'm given i i i have to applaud luke um comparing me to eugene levy which is you know a personal hero of mine but i'm actually going to go with maya's answer because I really like Ben Stiller and Mystery Men. Um, the answer I had was really any role that Paul Rudd plays, because I really feel like I'm a, a, a slightly less threatening. Well, and you were also co-stars in Overnight Delivery. so That is true. That is true. I did get to watch him eat from the craft service table 
uh, for a good 10 minutes. The man really likes his raw veggies. Nice, nice. And I'm a big fan of Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, so respect. <laughs> All right. Question number three. It has recently been announced, at least I think it's been announced, I'm not sure if it's a if it's a well-founded rumor if it's actually been announced, that the LA Galaxy are going to be placing a statue of David Beckham uh, outside their stadium. And that got me thinking, of all the MLS teams that are out there, who should be a statue in front of what team stadium? And this is going to go to Maya first. Who, who else deserves this honor of being immortalized in bronze outside their their venue? Well, my first my first thought is just like nine statues all across the league of K Kamara, my guy. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to go with him. I'm going to go with actually the Galaxy player that it should be. It shouldn't be David Beckham. It should be Landon Donovan. He's the one that's most deserving. Okay. That's that's a good answer. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the written on paper answer. Uh, being someone who loved the league from the get go, uh, the, I always think of when you think of the best teams in MLS history. I think of that early Bruce Arena dynasty with the with DC United. I think of them as the uh, in the same way I think of the 49ers because when I started watching football, the 49ers were just the end all be all, and I kind of still feel that way about DC United, even though they haven't been fabulous over the last decade. And the linchpin of that and one of the best playmakers to ever play in MLS was Marco Echeverri. Um, he was the really a face of the league other than the guys that were just on the 94 World Cup that people recognize. This was a guy who came here and really earned it on the field, I think, more than anyone else did in that, that early era. And I also like uh, not rushing to build statues of guys, so I think it's been a long enough time he he definitely served them well, won them numerous titles, one of the best players ever. I go with Marco Echeverri. Okay. Gentlemen, we know how this game works, right? We know that the person who comes up with the question I'm not saying Chris Wondolowski, even if it cost me the point. Yes, it did cost you the point. It also cost my the point because Donovan used to play for the Quakes and then went to the hated galaxy. Neither of you get the point. The obvious answer is Chris Wondolowski, not only of him, but that Famous shot from last year of him basically dunking on a prone Bingham after he scored on him in the Cali Classico. So, so let me yes. ask a question. When we put this statue of one of the greatest goal scorers up, is it going to be an reenactment of him whiffing on the World Cup goal that he should have got to beat Belgium? Or is it going to be some other memory maybe that you have? Because that's the why, one that I why, think of. Why, why would we immortalize that Clint Dempsey moment in the statue? I don't understand. Yeah, there's a lot you don't oh, that's right, because there game. were multiple guys who missed that game. But you thanks. keep telling yourself that Mondo missed. Yeah, okay. So um, good luck winning this game from here on out. <laughs> it's all right. It's stand all on. Right. Uh, stand you're, on. You're, you're, you're still tied at 1-1 one, one because neither of you got that one. I don't have much faith in Maya going forward here. Um, <laughs> question number four. We're going to stay with David Beckham uh, for this question. Cool. Now, one of the things about him is that he's a pretty boy. He's got a really high whiny voice. He's got an annoying wife. He plays for a horrible, hideous team. But the fact is that no matter how hard I try, I don't hate the guy. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, he for he forgo a lot of money. Forgo? Wow, that's not even a word. He foregoed a lot of money to come to America and to build a league that I love. Uh, he's very self-deprecating. He seems to be generally a pretty good guy all around. And as much as I want to hate the guy, I just, I can't bring myself to do it. So gentlemen, the question is to you, who else is somebody that you want to hate? You desperately want to punch them in the face, but you just cannot find a reason to justify it. And this goes to Luke. Well, I, I'm going to be stretching into to my area of expertise, uh, so th this is not going to be a point winner by any means. So, congrats, congrats, Maya. But um, it's oh, don't don't downplay how badly he's ticked me off. Okay, it's for me. It's it's Jonathan Taves, who is a the captain of the Chicago Blackhawks. He played for North Dakota, fighting racist logos. 
um, you know, it's college hockey days, which is the biggest rival of my alma mater and the college hockey team I cheer for. The Blackhawks are a natural rival of the Red Wings. When I was a Red Wings fan, natural rival of the Wild. They eliminated us five times in a row. A lot of the other Blackhawks on this dynasty team are very unlikable. Patrick Kane has been accused of sexual assault multiple times. Um, jo- Jonathan Taves does everything right. He works really hard. He's really, really good. He's really humble. He's really modest. I mean, he's basically, he changes his game to fit what the team needs. He's He's modern-day Steve Eiserman, who is my all-time favorite athlete. And even though no matter what team he goes to, it always ends up being a team I absolutely despise. Like, the the guy, the guy's just a good guy who works hard and has earned what he's got, and I just I just can't hate him. Okay. My- I'm in the Viking land for mine. Um, the biggest thorn in the side of my family favorite team in my favorite sport has always been and will always be remembered as Randy Moss. He was the most terrifying player that I've ever cheered against. He um, was the, I think uh, probably the best player at his position talent wise in the history of the NFL. Um, And I know that that's crazy talking about Jerry Rice, but at the same time, like Randy Moss, he was far scarier than Jerry Rice. Um, he's hilarious. I mean, yes, he did pretend to pull down his pants and wipe his bum against our goalpost, um, but that was funny. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's Moss. Moss was absolutely just amazing. And I even even on NFL, like I watch NFL Countdown now just to hear him talk because he's he's hilarious. So my answer is Moss. Okay. Um, so on the one hand, Luke had good rationale. On the other hand, I just got. Maya to talk nice about a Vikings player. Um, so um, I'm going to, I don't think it was Wando's fault. Yeah, that it's good recovery. Don't worry. Luke. There's <laughs> still a couple more questions for me to not give it to him. So for, for now, I'm going to give the point to Maya. my actual answer was Justin Timberlake. Um, a guy who, whose music I can't stand, who by every every tick in his, his history book should be a guy I absolutely hate. And he's just so self-effacing and, and just self-aware enough that I, I can't hold it against him. So, I like his music personally. Now, then you can fly out here and go to his concert with my wife and our uh, mutual friend, Bernsey. My, my, no, my partner and I already said the next time he, he comes to Milwaukee, he was here in November and the next, the next time he comes, we're, we're going no matter what. Okay, well, you have fun at that. I will. All right. So, it is now Maya 2, Luke 1. I, despite the, the, the plaudits that we had for Aquaman earlier, it's clear to anybody with half a brain that Marvel comics are, are far superior to DC in just about every single imaginable way, from their hero roster to the way they're written to their creators, to the cinematic universe. It's just a far superior product. However, there is one way, one solitary way, in which DC is superior to Marvel. Can you name that reason? And this is me first, correct? Even numbered? Yes. This is, no, no, you, you went first last time. Because you had the hockey player. Who I, I did have know. the hockey player you've never heard of. So this okay. Is, this is to mine. It's tough because I'm, t- I'm torn between two answers. And, and one of them is just that Alan Moore has done more stuff for DC, but that's not the answer I'm going to go with. The answer I'm going to go with is network television shows. The network television shows produced by uh, DC on the CW, The Flash, Arrow, and Smallville have been much better than what has been put out by Marvel with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been a boring show um, that just basically leaned on the, the, the movie universe to try to get uh, viewers. And each of the shows that, um, that the DC universe has put out has been original um, and well-beloved by a certain segment. And so I think you know, Marvel, well, um, just TV in general, because when you look at um, DC animated stuff that's been on television, that's been better, too. So um, th- I'd say that that even with, you know, I love Daredevil, but honestly, DC has been better in television. Okay, Luke, 
So Maya's has already got this wrong because he's completely overlooked Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and the Defenders. So um, have at it, buddy. This one's pretty much yours. Batman. D- DC has Batman. I have nothing else to add. That's that's the thing they do better. They ha- they have Batman and no one else does. Yeah, yeah. That that that's it. Not 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 only did you did you get the point anyway, but you had the written down answer. Yeah. <laughs> that was overrated. Oh, seriously. You obviously don't read Batman comics. It's so passe. Oh, um, I could pull the Batman Who Laughs number three that's sitting on my dresser right now that I bought today, if you'd like. Why would I like that? Theory. Shit. This comic's shit. Oh, okay. Whatever. Looks like Wando's not the only one missing here tonight. (laughs) All right. He's missing eternally. Cue the rim shot. Question number six. So the Oscars are coming up, and in general, I, I don't. I, I feel pretty confident saying that, except for one, maybe two. They're not really great movies. So that got me thinking about other bad movies, but not just bad movies. Bad movies by good directors, by directors who should know how to put together a solid movie, yet somehow come up with an absolute terrible film. So this is my question to, to you, and this goes to, to Luke first. What is the, the worst movie made by an otherwise good director? Hmm. There are there there are a few that, that I could go with, but I'm just gonna go with what popped into my head immediately because most people like to consider Steven Spielberg the greatest director of the last you know, 20 years, 30 years or whatever. And uh, Indiana Jones 4 is, should never have been made. Everything about it is terrible. You cast Shia LaBeouf to start with. You CGI'd fire ants or something. Alien spinning tops. um, Hiding in a fridge from nuclear reactor. CGI groundhogs too, if I recall correctly. I mean, that was that like, and like, it wasn't for the paycheck. Like, you and Lucas don't need the money. Like, you just thought you were making something good, and you made Indiana... What's... what's Shia LaBeouf's name, too, is, like, Mutt Lang or something. Like, no, wait, that's Shania Twain's ex-husband. It's Mutt something, though. Like, come on. Come on. Just, it's Mutt Jones. Mutt Jones, yeah. Like, oh, take the... You couldn't have found anything. Like, I'd rather watch War Horse, for God's sake. Like... <laughs> And that's a bold statement for me, because that's the movie that made me realize I don't need to see everything that's nominated for Best Picture, because I'm not going to go see War Horse in theaters and pay $12 for it, and it's probably still better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Okay. Maya? So, um, Mark, you seem to know everything, so I have just a point of clarification. What's it called when, like, the, the samurai, like, kills himself with his own sword so that he couldn't... I, I believe the term is, and I may mispronounce it, but it's seppuku. Okay, so uh, we're going to do that here, and we're going to try to get everything all into one. So I'm going to go Christopher Nolan, and uh, then uh, the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't hear, The Dark Knight Rises. Um, never have I been more excited for a movie that I thought was going to be good by such a great director, and I liked it coming out of the theater and it was terrible and so since it's like luke's guy and since batman is apparently your guy i'm gonna pull that all together and say christopher nolan dark knight rises which is funny because that was actually the other one i thought of in my head that i almost said because that that movie is is horrible and i i don't think he's made a a good movie since well a a great movie since inception and he's made a couple bad ones every time you see it (laughs) it does get it does like i yeah i dark knight rises is unwatchable now and uh, Interstellar is horrible, and I thought uh, Dunkirk was fine. I didn't have a bad time, but I'll never watch that movie again. Okay. Um, so, I actually kind of enjoyed Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, despite the fact that I didn't want really? to. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I went into it thinking, oh, I'm going to hate this. And Good for I you. It. it wasn't great. <laughs> the movie's terrible. <laughs> I didn't hate it. Um but, uh, of course, Maya put it over the crossbar yet again. So I'm actually, I'm not going to give either of you the points, to, to be completely honest here. Um, the answer, the correct answer, the obvious answer was Dune by David Lynch. 
a nigh unwatchable movie with um, Sting in a Speedo. And it, it it's horrible. But uh, hopefully... The, he's the, kind of the, 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 got that career, though, where I think his stuff is so hit or miss. Like, he can make... He can make Mulholland Drive, and it's, you know, absolutely fantastic. And then he can make Lost Highway, and I fell asleep. Like, I kind of feel like he's 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 peaks and valleys. Like, it's either a miss have, or a, a home run. He he does have peaks and valleys, but the original Dune is the Marianas Trench. Yeah, that's true. Try and sit through that thing. So, all right, gentlemen. We are tied 2-2 coming into the final round. You know, um, great. I, I just want to point this out. So, in true heel form, the rule of this game is you have to win four. So, I feel like a wrestler who is the champion and is using the count out to retain the belt, because that's what's going to happen here today. And so, I just want to, you know. That's I mean, actually not true. It's just whoever has the most points we've always no, done. It's always been who. You no, because Mark, Mark, Mark and you routinely give no one no points. So, we've always gone this way. So, just mm-hmm. just no, calm yourself I, down. Once again, as the guy who has to listen to these episodes four or five times because I do all the post production, I guarantee you that there's been multiple the guy games. Who the intro who, who came up with this, let me go back to the transcript here and read it to you because apparently you've forgotten. Which is really uh, funny because you're going to read something that you think I'm not just going to edit out. The winner gets <laughs> four. To win, you must get four. That's always been the rule. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. So then we'll have to negate some of the previous games because we've never played by those rules before. Um, I'm glad we had our favorite segment of my complaints about the rules or how questions are unfair. That is my favorite segment. Yes. As the heel of this show and as the heel of this league, I'm just, it's just true to form. Well, that's fine. Luke can be the people's champion and you can be the corporate champion. So... Question number seven. Okay. That makes boom Ken Shamrock. (laughs) All right. Question number seven. Julie Purcell is missing. Now you two are Detective A's and West, (laughs) and you are trying to get the information out of me, Mr. Harrison James. (laughs) Now, you've taken me into the woods... You've got me handcuffed in the barn, and you're going to start torturing me in order to get the information. However, you're not allowed to use your fists because that might leave a mark. No. Instead, all you are armed with is a boombox and a CD, and you are going to have to torture me with music. Now, which musician... Are you going to torture me with that is going to be so painful to my ears that I'm going to give up what happened to Julie Purcell? Oh, this is easy. It's pavement. I already have the CDs. I would play you pavement. I'd start off real, like real kind of like nice. I go uh, start off with summer Bay, which is least real kind of listenable, but real kind of edgy. And then I go right to Westing, which is just God awful experimental, music and with your love of all things Stephen Malcolm's I would have that out that information out for me in like 20 seconds It'd be great so it's my turn yes now now I while I'm impressed with my answer it is not the one I have written down so <coughs> excuse me be <clears throat> uptown girl she's been living in her rights whatever Billy Joel I am going to fucking blast you to death with Billy Joel. Ladies and gentlemen, the people's champion, Luke Neitzel. That is what I have written down. Though, um, in all honesty, um, if you really want to get me, it's don't do Uptown Girls, you do moving out. Oh! Oh, I want to claw my own goddamn earballs out. Well, it's only like 45 seconds of a three-minute song, so. (laughs) Yes. So... Uh With a score of three to two, Luke has overcome and is the new champion and can edit this any way he likes so that the rules allow for it. No, I think I think we'll just we'll just leave it how it is. I'm I'm fine with it. So woo woo! The stars have back aligned. It's good to be on top again. Now I'm gonna have to actually make myself music since uh Prince's family didn't like me using a song for my last music. <laughs> 
Just don't use Billy Joel. Please, please <laughs> love of God, don't use Billy Joel. It'll just be ack, 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 ack on repeat for 30 seconds. Bye.